Alright, in this video we're going to show you how to build a soak away. We're going to give you some really good tips and guide you for what it is that you want to be looking for when you're laying out the exact location of the soak away on the property. You don't want your soak away to be right next to the house. You don't need all that hydrostatic pressure being put up against the basement wall. You also don't want the water through capillary action to make it back to the foundation of the house. Now, so where are, where are they going to be in relation to the, um, that? They're going out that way a little bit? Yeah, I mean, right now is the time if we're gonna change any of this. Yeah. I mean, you wanna get it away from the, the garden art? Right. Okay. So it's right by the sculpture right now. Um, so, there would be two of them, so, right? So you're going to have two of these drains. Yeah. So there are two 24-inch uh, round saucers that would sit uh, on the grass. If you don't want to see this soak away, you can install it deeper and then cover it with some dirt and grow grass over it. Unless you have an iron oak problem, something that you're aware that you're going to need to get inside this soak away and possibly take care of things like that, it's okay to go ahead and recess it, put down some dirt on top of it, enough to where the grass can grow healthy on top of it. Usually you want four or five inches of topsoil or, or native soil with the turf grass to grow well on top of the soak away. All right, so let's get to some of the most important parts of what you need to know when installing a soak away. This is what I have learned I'm sharing with you my experience so my advice comes from you know just actual in the field experience what i've learned what i know okay where the trees are in the back the evergreen trees they're a real tall hedge of arborvitae that's the lowest point notice how the soak away is far away from the house so that we're not close to the foundation of the house i don't want this water to wick back through the soil through capillary action and make it back to the foundation of the house. So I want to be far enough away from the house. Having said that, I don't want to be in the lowest point of the yard. That is not where you want to put your soak away or dry well, whatever you want to refer to it as. You don't want it in the lowest point of the yard. If you do that, you made one of the biggest mistakes. So we have a D-box right here. It's gonna catch all the shingle gravel and, and leaves that make it down this far. We want, you know, a, a box to basically catch all the garbage. We don't wanna fill our dry well with trash. So we have a 20 round there. Then we have two 48 inch tall, 24 inch in diameter dry wells. And we're gonna surround that by stone. Then we have a leach line. What is a leach line? A leach line is if those end up full, which it would really take, you know, God, days of rain, then it'll come into the leach line. The leach line will then let some of the water, you know, be absorbed in here, and then we're going to have a pop-up right here for discharge. So if you ever make it to bulk water, then we're going to flow water out of this. But this is why dry wells typically fail. You know, people don't put a leach line on them, and they don't you know, put an overflow valve on them. And you have to put your dry well where you still have elevation. You can't put it in the lowest part of the yard. That's usually the thing that is death to all dry wells. I see these videos and, oh, dry wells don't work. And, you know, the thing's a hole full of water, but it's put in the low point of the yard. You know, you need to be up where you have a little bit of elevation. You know, get it away from the house. And then before you're in the lowest point of the yard here in a swale or the far back go ahead and put that dry well while you still have some elevation now you can fill that dry well up and have this overflow set up for bulk water this soak away is built out of two 24 inch in diameter 48 inch deep dry wells with a leach line for overflow you have to have an overflow Another reason why you need your soak away at a higher elevation than the lowest point of the yard. That way, if you do reach a point to where your soak away is full, it can't take in any more water. You just now need time for it to soak the water away. Then it can run up into the leach line 
providing a little more on-site storage and it's covering a little more of the area where you can soak away that bulk water. This is knife cut. You can see how there's not material removed. There's just a slice made. That's it. That's what knife cut is. You take a solid pipe and you just take a blade. In manufacturing, there's a blade that cuts what is referred to as knife cut. Again, this is a form of drain pipe that would fall in the category of perforations because it will take in water. But you see how those knife cut, it doesn't remove material. The, perf the perforated pipe that you see in all the big box stores, they have ground out. Our eight slot, it's ground out. Knife cut, this loads with water and then it's, it's a slower release. It just slowly releases the water. That's how we use it. When we're building leach lines and leach fields, that's how we use knife cut. Okay, so we're going to show you how to hook up the distribution box to the first drywall in your soak away. We use a rubber compression fitting and we go ahead and we use PVC Schedule 35. That works best with these 4-inch rubber compression fittings. We'll have a nice 4-inch pipe from the D-box to the drywall. Now the second drywall we're going to do another compression fitting and that's going to be to our leach line. As far as the two drywalls in the soak away they do not need to be connected you're going to have stone all around them and there's so many holes drilled through them if you do it right you've drilled a bunch of holes through them the water is going to move through the holes of the first drywall into the second drywall and there's going to be stone around both drywalls the water is going to move through the void of all the stone you'll always when looking into the two drywalls in your soak away have the exact same level of water this system might be made up of two drywalls, a D-box, and a leach line, but it's all one big soak away. So the water will always be at the same level. We want that distribution box because I don't want leaves and shingle gravel to mess up the soak away. And you could shop vac that D-box out however often you need. Usually once a year is enough. Look at this beautiful soak away. Again, nothing tying the two drywalls together. You don't need that. 20 inch round D box. Beautiful textbook soak away. Two 24 inch in diameter, 48 inch deep drywalls in that soak away. Probably about 40 feet of leach line. We used some of the armor pipe to connect to the D box because we had that little bend to make. So it made a real nice sweeping soft bend beautiful soak away. Now this can load with water and it's at an elevation where the ground can take it in and wick that water in as it works its way to the lowest point of the yard. If you build your soak away right, gravity will do all the work for you. What I just described, gravity takes all that bulk water in the soak away and takes it to a lower point. By the time that water gets near that lower point, it has soaked away over such a big area of subsoil that you're not going to have an issue with this ponding standing water. There's some extreme cases for sure. Well, then now you just have to build a bigger soak away. Always remember to hold the pipe down when building a leach field, leach line, or French drain. Otherwise, the stone will push the pipe over and it'll get under the pipe. Always hold your pipe down. The rocks, they'll want to push the pipe and they'll want to get up against the wall of the trench, between the pipe and the wall of the trench, and go down. Gravity's going to take these heavy rocks and it's just going to carry them down and they're going to get stuck underneath the pipe. So it's going to change the void that you're running on the bottom of the trench. The drain will still work. But ideally, you want to get the biggest void. Uh, the biggest void should be at the bottom of the trench. That's what you're shooting for, because that's where the water is going to end up. Remember, the pipe is the biggest void in a leach line or leach field or French drain. That pipe at the bottom, a good drainage system, whether you're leaching water away, whether you're taking in water through a French drain, it has a lot of void. The water moves through the void. Well, the biggest void in these systems, that would be the pipe. 
The pipe has this giant void. Look inside a four inch diameter pipe. That is a huge void. So you want that at the very bottom. Notice how the soak away is not built near any trees. That's by design. You never want your soak away to be near the trees. It's nice when you keep your distribution box accessible because you're going to need to shop vac that out once a year to get all the leaves cleaned up to keep your system working, to keep your system healthy, your soak away working properly. And we have a pop-up emitter at the end of the leach line right there for bulk water for when it's full and you need to keep the grass cut out around that too so that works properly. So the only thing you'll see is the distribution box. If you found this information helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. And until the next video.